Well, hi, everyone, and welcome to the AT&T Countdown to Kickoff. We're back at our home away from home, Mercedes-Benz Stadium with Atlanta United down in Miami tonight for their first ever meeting against Inter-Miami and really the first true road game that Atlanta United has played in almost six full months. It was February 29th of this year when Atlanta United played in Nashville. So um, if you don't count, at least in league play, the games that were played in Orlando, it's it's been a long time since Atlanta United have had to do this, and they traveled on the day of the game, part of the MLS health and safety protocols. Uh, it's a very unique challenge for Atlanta United tonight, and I, I'm interested to see how they deal with it. We've seen some teams struggle in these situations. We've seen some teams struggle to find their footing early, and we've seen the Houston Dynamo set a club record with five goals away from home last night. So really those early stages of the match, we'll be looking to see what kind of rhythm the team's in. Don't want to give up the first goal tonight. I think that's something that both teams nope. can agree upon. Now, uh, we're going to show you the lineup in a moment, but we do know of a couple definite lineup changes, one of them due to injury, Fernando Mesa. Here is the injury report. And the club announced last night that is going to be out for two to three weeks with a knee injury that he suffered at some point Saturday in that Nashville game. And I'm still not exactly sure when or how it happened. But we know that Fernando is going to be out for at least the next few weeks. Yeah, we were a little worried when this check was going on in the match because this could be a sign of a, a worse knee injury than what it ended up being. It could have been worse than it was. Fernando Meza gets a little lucky with only missing a couple of weeks, but that will probably take him out of this stretch of scheduled games. Yeah, most likely because Atlanta United has five games over the next two and a half weeks. So if Fernando's out for three weeks – you can pretty much do the math. We do know that a couple very key attacking players are playing tonight. Rodolfo Pizarro is going to be one of them for Inter-Miami. And this is going to be tricky for Atlanta United because not only do you have Meza out, Jason, you also have Franco Escobar out on suspension. So how does Atlanta United deal with a player like Rodolfo Pizarro? He's not an easy one for any team to deal with, and he's not an easy one for any one player to deal with. His movement off the ball very crafty, very difficult to follow for one player. I mean, you look at it here in this sequence inside the 18, he's drifting around. He gets away from defenders very easily. Philadelphia doesn't pick him up, and he's so calm and composed in, in a pressure situation. So look at the touches right here to create the space for that shot. He had a great match on Saturday against Orlando City as well. Yeah, a goal and an assist for Pizarro in their 3-2 win over Orlando City. That was the assist. You know, it's interesting. The last time we saw Rodolfo Pizarro in person, Jason, we were down at uh, Monterey, Mexico, Estadio BBVA Boncomer, when he came on as a sub helping Monterey put away Atlanta United that night in the CONCACAF Champions League. Uh, with a 3 0 scoreline. Now, Pitti Martinez for Atlanta United. He had a great game Saturday as well with two goals. Yeah, incredible match from Pitti Martinez. The first touch on this long ball from Eric Rometty loses the defender. Then he wins the dribbling duel right there on Walker Zimmerman. Then slots it by Joe Willis. This is such a difficult goal. The next one got all the highlights. This one might actually be the harder one of the two. What a night for Pitti and a night where. You needed somebody to step up and find the back of the net. It had been a long time. This team misses Joseph Martinez up front. Pitti Martinez was in a freer role from an attacking perspective than we've seen in a while, and he delivered. First multi-goal game in league play for Pitti Martinez. And Pitti, by the way, has game-winning goals in six Atlanta United matches over the last year and a half. Eleven goals total, six of them have been game-winning goals in Atlanta United, 7-2-0 all-time in matches in which Pitti Martinez scores. He is going to be in the starting lineup tonight. Let's show you that lineup now. Now, there are some changes here that Stephen Glass has made, short turnaround of this Wednesday night match. So you see players like Emerson Heinemann and Fernando Meza, obviously, come out of the starting lineup tonight. Manuel Castro goes in. He didn't play at all on Saturday, and you see the rest of it there. Uh, not really dramatically different in the back line from what we saw post Mesa injury on Saturday. The Franco Escobar suspension handed down from the MLS Disciplinary Committee takes him out of the match tonight. Brooks Lennon moves from right wing to right back. Anton Walks keeps his starting spot. He was very good on Saturday night. Remetti, Mo Adams, and Mateo Sosetu make up your midfield three. Be very curious to see the makeup of that three. 
and it's Castro on the right, Pitti Martinez on the left, and Adam John up top. Well, you've got a couple key players in this lineup tonight for Atlanta United as they try to solve a Miami team that's coming off their first win of the season on Saturday. You mentioned Brooks Lennon. It was the defending runs that we saw from him on Saturday like this that maybe reassure you a little bit with him starting at right back tonight, but really he's going to be active all over the pitch, isn't he? Yeah, you're going to need him to get forward in moments like this one, have some interplay, look to put in crosses. The crosses need to be just a little bit better. The effort from Brooks Lennon, the engine from Brooks Lennon, you need that in a game like this on short rest. His recovery runs were really impressive. Remember, he's playing right wing on Saturday night. He's the one who comes back to have Franco Escobar's back, block that out for a corner kick. Brooks Lennon will still have to get forward at times tonight, but he'll have that defensive responsibility. Here's an example, Jason. If Miami should attempt to press against Atlanta United tonight, is this a way they could solve it? 100%. And Brooks Lennon can be a part of that, even from right back. You see George Bellow delivering that cross as the left back. Watch the interplay right here to eliminate three defenders from Nashville and create this opportunity. Lennon doesn't make the most of the final chance, and he's going to want that one back. But when Miami presses in the midfield, Atlanta has to play through it quickly, one touch passing like that. All right, so that is the scene set for tonight down in Miami. Atlanta United trying to get three more points, get some points on the road in true road matches, like I said, 1-0-0 in league play this year. It hasn't been that much. But this is going to be tough against an Inter-Miami team that's probably feeling themselves a little bit after scoring three goals against Orlando. Yeah, Inter-Miami handled Orlando pretty well coming off of a great performance in the MLS's back tournament. They changed their pressing game up a little bit, and it's one thing that I would tell you guys to keep an eye on. They're not going to press as high as often. They'll try to trap teams at midfield and then unleash the pressure. But if Atlanta can play through that, Pitti Martinez, Manuel Castro will have some opportunities tonight. All right, we'll see. Kickoff at 8 p.m., and we'll be back on the AT&T Countdown to kickoff on Saturday here at Mercedes-Benz Stadium for another home game as Atlanta United hosts Orlando City. Play continues in this third phase of the MLS schedule. Atlanta United can move as high as third in the East with a win tonight. Let's see if they can get three points. Thanks for joining us on the AT&T Countdown to kickoff.